What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another New World video. Today's video is all about the Benjamins, baby. Unless you live in Canada, then I guess it wouldn't be Benjamins. I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> today we're going to be teaching you guys all about making gold and money in New World. I'm going to be sharing with you guys a lot of my secrets of what I'd use to make as much gold as I possibly can. So make sure you guys pay attention. I don't want you to miss anything here and end up broke come launch. Also, one thing to take into consideration before we get into this, guys, is markets in New World are location specific, meaning that if you're selling items in first light, you're selling items in first light or buying items in first light. The same applies to Everfall, same applies to Windsward. So Pay attention to where a lot of the traffic is going and and by understanding where all the traffic is, you know where to spend most of your time leveraging the market. For those of you guys who don't know, you might be new to New World or even returning guests that may have only been able to play some of the betas for a short amount of time, you probably quickly found out that gold is a huge part of progression and being able to manage it alongside your Azoth and any other economical properties in the game is extremely important because with the taxes, the fees, all the stuff you have to pay for your housing rentals, property tax if you own like an actual territory that you have to pay like if you guys want to see your towns upgraded in terms of the crafting stations, if you want to see your fort upgraded for more efficient defense fortifications. Or if you're just trying to play the market, gold is extremely important. So today, from a beginner standpoint, we're going to tackle some key things that you guys can do in the very beginning of the game to get your econ off to a very, very, very strong start. So before we get into that, though, I want to talk about some things not to do with your gold when you start the game. First thing is stop spending gold under level 13 to 15 to repair equipment that you have in your inventory. The reason why I say this is because if you're going through the story and you're progressing, you're doing things, you're killing stuff, you are going to replace your early gear so freaking fast. Even faster if you tend to be a crafter and you're looking at getting the materials that are nearby towns. So with that being said, spending your repair parts and your gold to repair equipment for those of you guys who don't know how to repair, you just hold R and click the item you're trying to repair. But doing that, will slowly siphon off your gold stores, especially in the beginning, because you won't really have that much of it, even after you complete the story quest, which will leave you between 500 and 1,000 gold. Another gold sink in the very beginning is buying tools, all right? Especially tools without perks. At launch, you guys will probably see people selling tools from 100 gold to 500 gold, depending on the perks that they have, and people will actually buy them. This is actually a double-edged sword, though, because if you guys intend to make these tools, there's some serious gold that you can make from selling these tools. Now, even though I'm telling you not to buy them, doesn't mean that you shouldn't sell them and take advantage, because chances are not everybody in the world is going to watch this video. So it gives you a supreme advantage when paying attention to what you should and shouldn't do. So since we're on the, the topic of the auction house, another thing that you shouldn't be spending gold on is buying cheap weapons just because they're green, especially pre-20, all right? I understand that when you look at these weapons, especially with, with the way RNG and luck and all that stuff will work for some people when you guys are going through the game, getting gear might be the hardest damn thing you'll ever do. But also in the beginning, understand that weapons, especially pre-level 20, the stats that come on these weapons aren't really that great and it's easy to make up for these weapons early on. I can tell you in open beta, I made a killing selling green weapons for you know 100 to 200 gold just because the stats look nice because of the play on human psychology everybody wants more 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 better 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 but as frequent as green drops are as frequent as stuff is especially as you guys get into Amaran expedition 20 to 25 you will start to see that spending the money on the weapons beforehand is a complete waste now you guys see how we're kind of giving tips and kind of warning you against doing things at the same time <laughs> that's kind of the idea here something that could also be a curse to your bank account can also be a blessing if you spin it around and that's kind of the topic for how you guys can make gold in new world the biggest thing is you got to kind of pay attention to human psychology and how people think understand that human nature is ambitious greedy 
power hungry, right? We all want more power. It just is what it is. So if you understand that people are going to be looking for certain things that is in their minds going to advance their progression faster than anybody else, if you turn that into a system that you can sell certain items, tools, weapons, uh, quest items that people don't want to look for because they didn't level the gathering up to 30, specifically Rivercrest, which is uh, a herb that you can get by getting your gathering to 30. It's along the rivers and stuff like that. Or petal cap mushrooms that are very plentiful in Windsward, but it might be a pain to find in other places. These are things that you guys can gather Use them to either gather XP for yourself or get more XP for yourself and or pedal them to help people feel like they're progressing faster than anybody else. So if you take a second and you think about the stuff in the game, aka tools, aka weapons, aka quest items, aka anything that you could sell, bags, potions, ammo. Ammo is a huge money maker, by the way, especially early because nobody's gonna want to fight other people for iron. It's gonna be crazy impossible to find iron, I feel. And of course, saltpeter, which you'll need for gunpowder. Yeah, but thinking about all of those things, that people are going to want to buy so they can speed past everybody else, I believe are going to be the most profitable items. So what I wanted to avoid doing in this video is giving you guys just sell this, this, and this, right? And kind of open your minds to start thinking about, okay, if I'm a beginner and I wanna level as fast as I can or move past everybody else, what are some of the things that I would need that I would buy if somebody sold them to me? at a fair price. And once you identify those items for yourself, then those are the items that you immediately can sell. So I know a lot of people are gonna be dumping a lot of their gold into guild banks and things of that nature, but instead of depositing all of your gold into your guild bank to help buy a territory, it might help you out to keep a little bit of that, maybe 100 gold of that 500 you have initially after you finish the initial quest, and then use that to leverage some things that you can sell in the auction house. So if I had to give you guys like a personal strategy of mine, I'm looking at getting into the game, knocking out all the stuff, getting my faction, crafting my iron tools, whatever surplus tools that I have when I craft outside of my full set, I'm immediately selling. If they have perks, I'm doubling the price, right? So if it has Azoth extraction, more XP, you know, for faster leveling of the particular harvesting skill, I'm selling it for twice the price. So if I'm selling a regular tool, for let's say 100 gold or 200 gold, then I might sell a perked tool, a green tool for 200 gold, 300 gold, right? Does that make sense? So that's what I'm looking at. And the reason why is because when people are going through the market and they will be going through the trade posts to speed things up in their minds, they will identify items that are better than other items and then immediately buy those. If you sell them too cheap, which is also a strategy, then people, people can buy them for resale. So if you wanna get rid of them quick, you can drop them for 100 gold, somebody will buy it and resell it for 200 and still make about an 80 gold profit or so. But these are some of the things that you guys can pay attention to. Outside of playing the auction house, the fastest way to make gold, of course, is to do the story quest because they give a crap ton of gold. However, a lot of the story quests are gated behind, obviously, your level. So the faster you can level up, the faster you can get access to more story quests, and these story quests can give you a lot of gold per quest, which can help you. Now, I think that even though the town board quests are okay, um, I don't think that they're that great for gold just because they give such a small amount. And with the RNG that you get gold from mobs unless you're aoe farming meaning pulling you know six to ten targets at a time and killing them all down then gold farming might not be that efficient there either especially when you counter with repair costs um, if you guys happen to be using a higher level staff and you know all that good jazz the biggest thing to understand here is when you're trying to make money you want to kind of put all your eggs in in a bunch of different baskets so if you're getting a bunch of green drops a bunch of crazy loot that you don't have anything to do with and you nobody in your guild needs them then you put all that stuff in the auction house if you're crafting tools you put all that stuff in the auction house bags you put all that stuff in the auction house right all your junk gear you can salvage for repair parts and gold and then the mobs that you kill uh also dropping gold could potentially offset the repair cost that you have and then the remainder is just your profit and if you apply everything that i talked about here in this video 
you could set yourself up very, very nicely in terms of making a lot of gold very early on, which can really set up your economy. This can help you get into your first house very quickly, especially at level 15. And I will tell you right now, the faster you get a house, the faster you can travel between territories, the more efficient your XP gain will be, the more efficient pretty much everything will be because you have less travel time be between places. So for example, if you had a house in, let's say, First Light, or you had a house in Everfall, the biggest thing that you can do is you could set your in recall point to one of those territories and use your house teleport to get to another territory. Combine that with Azoth extraction on your tools and or a lot of the Azoth that you've gathered. And now anytime there's a quest to go to first light, <clears throat> which there will be, you could just instantly go and it cuts the time, right? Does that make sense? Or if you got to go to Everfall or if, if you need a fast travel point between all the story quests to get your Azoth staff and or let's say you had a fast travel point in Windsward, specifically a house to cut your costs down then it's easier to go to Amarine Excavation, which in turn can be a very profitable experience if you guys manage your resources correctly. On top of that, there are other things that you can farm in the game, such as the Vials of Azoth, which when you use these vials, they give you Azoth, which can sell for a decent amount of gold. We were selling these in the betas for about 500 gold a pop, and they were killing it, and these can be easily found in areas that have lots of elites. Now, one more tip I want to give you guys when managing the marketplace is instead of buying things outright, if you're in a rush, you can create buy orders and or sell orders. For those of you guys who play in crypto, you guys know kind of how this works. But for example, we're going to be using the vial of suspended Azoth here. And with the vial of suspended Azoth, like I told you, we were selling these for like 500 gold a piece um, and that people were buying them. However, uh, what I did to kind of make a profit <laughs> and uh, close beta, you guys are welcome to steal this tactic, by the way, is I would create buy orders for 100 gold, 200 gold, roughly 20 to 30 percent of what I was selling them for. Because I know that somebody out there somewhere probably didn't know what they had in their hands. So they're just selling it on the cheap, you know, for in their mind, they thought it was expensive. So I would put in the buy orders and the buy orders would always fill and it would give me Azoth vials on the cheap that I can then sell and or use if I needed Azoth. So fortunately, uh, once we got the Azoth on the tools and stuff, I didn't have that issue. We started participating in invasions and all that. And then I was pretty much capped on Azoth all the time. But <laughs> until then, uh, this is a great way that you can kind of min max and play the market uh, so you can make as much gold as you possibly can. And if all else fails and you guys are gamblers, there's a slash roll command that rolls dice from one to six and you can play big bank, little bank with you know, whoever you run into in town, just make sure they pay up when they lose. All right. <laughs> but other than that, guys, uh, those are some key things that I really wanted to talk about. Uh, there's a lot more intricate systems and stuff that you can really take advantage of in terms of like gemstones and jewelry and like profitable professions and all of that. But I really wanted to get into like the basics and provide you guys some tips and some tricks so you guys can manipulate the market and make as much gold as you can as you guys are getting into new world because let me tell you economy is so 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 important and you guys will start to find this out the higher level you get in new world especially when you get to 60 with all those crazy repair costs and respect fees it's just crazy so anyway guys uh if you guys got any questions comments concerns definitely let me know in the comment box below and i'll be happy to assist and with that being said we will see you guys in the next video peace